move to chapter five soil dynamic te test <coughs> because the soil mechanics uh, when we want to develop the theory we based on the uh, test or experiments and the same in soil dynamics <coughs> then in soil dynamics uh, the development the law of deformation strength of soil and the dynamic law and the basic indexes to characterize this character characteristic must be obtained through indoor or field tests. And uh, we do some tests uh, in in laboratory and to find that uh, some uh, dynamic behavior of soil or in situ we investigate or observe the response uh, of the soil structure or uh, and the dynamic load. The content of soil dynamics characteristic tests includes the soil sample is prepared in a certain sample container according to the required humidity, density, and structure and the stress state. And that means the, the, the site type is the actual condition of the site soil. But in laboratory, we have to sim simulate the real stress or other conditions, uh, include the humidity, density, then the vibration laws with the different forms and the different in intensities are applied. And then the stress and the strength of the sample and the vibration action are measured so as to make a qualitative and a quantitative judgment on the change law of soil properties and the related indexes uh, and uh, in soil in soil dynamic text uh, we have to uh, do uh, to have uh, ha have some terminations on it. the first is to uh, it is the determination of characteristic parameters used in soil dynamic calculations uh, for example, usually we will, uh, we will uh, use uh, the dynamic uh, shear modulars or uh, damping ratio. Uh, then we do some dynamic ties and, uh, of the soil and to get these parameters. Uh, we have to use these parameters in the soil dynamic analysis. The second is dynamic elastic modulars or dynamic shear modulars. Uh, this is uh, usually um, we, we will uh, we will do some uh, tractor shear test uh, or direct shear test, but is a cyclic test and the uh, dynamic load. And uh, using the relationship between the uh, stress and the strain, then we, we, we can evaluate the, the elastic modulars and the shear modulars. Uh, the third is damping ratio or attenuation coefficients. Uh, damping ratio. Uh, this parameter is used to describe the energy dissipation during the uh, uh, and the uh, dynamic load, and uh, we can find uh, it, it will change. Uh, then uh, we 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 we, uh, we can uh, get the, the attenuation coefficient of it. The fourth is dynamic stress or liquefaction cyclic shear stress. And uh, this is the uh, 
for for some uh, soft soil or the uh, liquefiable soil. And for so soft soil and the cyclic log, we can find that the strength of the soil uh, will change or 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 decrease. And we 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 can according to the uh, the dynamic test result, uh, we develop some uh, uh, some uh, equations to describe the the uh, the changing. Uh, changing of dynamic strength, and for liquefiable soil, <laughs> we will cite the amplitude of dynamic load, and uh, to make uh, uh, numbers of cyclic. <laughs> and uh, at last, we can find the the soil liquefied. Uh, then we can mark that. Uh, for one amplitude, and we have uh, a number of cyclic, which can uh, uh, which can cause the liquefaction in the soil. Uh, then perhaps we can change the amplitude, and uh, but we continue uh, uh, to uh, to to apply the cyclic load. Uh, finally, it will liquefy too. Uh, then. This new amplitude relative to a new number of cyclic. Uh, when we do a few of these tests, uh, then we can we, we can create uh, uh, liquefaction curves uh, or dynamic strength curves. Uh, finally, we can developing uh, well, uh, is developing law of vibration power water pressure. We know. That uh, the liquefaction is due to the power water pressure increasing, uh, and uh, according to the principle of effective stress, uh, the, uh, the 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 soft soil, the strength of soft soft soil also depends on the uh, power water pressure. Uh, but under the uh, cyclic load or dynamic load, the power water pressure will increase uh, uh, or developing. Then uh, we uh, we we can uh, using the result of uh, uh, cyclic uh, dynamic test uh, develop uh, allow to describe the the the, the uh, power water pressure. And uh, you'll see, uh, in the laboratory test, we can get the uh, for uh, tractor test or direct shear test. Uh, uh, we can get the stress strain curves of soil. Uh, for uh, static load, uh, we can get only one curve. Uh, then we use these curves, we can get the elastic modulars of soil. Or deformation modulars of subsoil, or compression modulars of soil, and uh, usually the elastic modulars uh, is the original modulars uh, or uh, uh, original read, or original read of the stress strain curves. That means uh, at this moment uh, the deformation of soil is very sm small. Deformation or strain of soil is very small, and is uh, in the elastic uh, deformation uh, period. And uh, we go on uh, increase the out. Uh, we can find that the 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 rate will decrease. And uh, to 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 the end, uh, then we can get an, an average ratio, uh, and we define it as a deformation modulus. Uh, it's the the ratio between the stress and the strain, and then compression modulus. Compression modulus usually uh, we use this compression modulus. Uh, 
has the the uh, 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 lateral constraint condition uh, and uh, use E S to describe it. And uh, usually these parameters is describe the, the deformation ability of the soil. And we can also use the uh, actual strain uh, and the volume change to describe the, these uh, compression modulars. Uh, but under the cyclic load or dynamic load, uh, uh, the stress strain relationship of, of soil given as this. Uh, uh, you see, the upper curve is uh, dynamic strain, but the lower curves are dynamic stress. Here we can find that the stress and the strain is in the same phase, in the same phase. Uh, that means the angle, uh, the, 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 the angle, uh, uh, the angle frequency, uh, are same, uh, uh and there's uh, no difference of the angle, uh. Now, let's see, uh, the, the, the stress strain curves of the, uh, soil and the dynamic load. Uh, we can find that it's a loom. Loop is a loop. Uh, uh, upper one is a loading curves, and the lower one is unloading curves. Uh, and uh, these two branches uh, combined create a, 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 a loop. Uh, and uh, from the original point to to the end of this loop, uh, we connect a line, uh, and this line give uh, elastic uh, or deformation modulars uh, uh, of the soil and uh, dynamic load. Uh, but this read, uh, these modulars describe the average modulars uh, of the soil and the, the dynamic load. Uh, the area inside the loop described the energy dissipation during one cycle load. Let's see uh, the, the, the modulars. Uh, the meaning of the dynamic elastic modular here, just now I say dynamic modular, ED, uh, is just used the, uh, the end, the end of, uh, the end of the loop. Uh, uh, let's go back the end of the loop or uh, the retaining point uh, of the loop uh, here. Use the stress at this point and stress and the strain of this point to calculate the dynamic elastic modulars AD equal to sigma D max over epsilon D max. Then the meaning of shear modulars are uh, here. This modular used uh, the, the pressure, uh, the normal stress, uh, or the uh, axial strain. Uh. But for the shear modulars, uh, uh, we use GD to describe the, the, uh, the shear modulars. Uh. They equal to uh, it is also the 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 stress and the strain at the retaining point, uh, or we say it's the maximum value. Uh, we use shear stress tau uh, tau d max uh, over epsilon d max. But here usually we use another character gamma. Uh, gamma means uh, shear strain. Shear strain. Shear stress over shear strain. Then this is the shear modulars, uh, and uh, tau d max and epsilon uh, d max is in the dynamic test uh, the the retaining point uh, with the maximum value of stress and shear stress and shear strain. Uh, then uh, it it gave the 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 
uh, dynamic shear modulars. The third one is damping ratio. Uh, just now I told you that damping ratio is uh, a, a parameter to describe the uh, the, the energy loose. Uh, then let's see the damping. Uh, damping ratio here we use big D. Uh, uh, in some uh, some other literatures, they use Kasi, uh, uh, Greece characters. Uh, then D equal to A0 over 4 pi AT. Uh, then what is A0 and what is AT? A0 uh, is the area enclosed by the hysteresis loop uh, represents the energy loss by loading and uh, loading. Uh, let's see, just, just uh, the area inside this hysteresis, hysteresis loop, uh, the area inside this loop. Uh, this is the A0. Uh, we use this area to describe the, the energy loss. And what is AT? Uh, AT is the area of the right angle formed by the line from the top of the hysteresis loom to the arranging and the transverse axle. And the surface strain energy without loading or unloading. Here I see AT is the, the Area of triangular uh, from O original point to A point to D point. Uh, the area of this triangular. And the force is the uh, hysteresis attenuation coefficient. Uh, you see, we record the uh, amplitude time history. We can find the amplitude. Uh, will decrease with the different cyclic. That means the amplitude will decrease gradually. Here, I give four cyclic, uh, uh, five cyclics. Then we use five cyclic in order to calculate an average value in these five cyclics. Uh, then we can use the uh, the ratio between the initial amplitude to the fifth amplitude, uh, and we divide it by the five number. Uh, we get the 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 average ratio. Uh, and this ratio just described the attenuation. Uh, attenuation. Here, we use a log logarithm decay rate, uh, delta. Uh, delta equal to n one over n. Uh, that's the average value. Uh, and the log a one over a n plus one uh, during this n cycle cyclic load. And the relationship why we we want to calculate this uh, logarithm decay rate uh, here. There's also another relationship between the logarithm decay rate and damping ratio, uh, given as this. Delta, delta equal to 2 pi d over square root 1 minus d square. Okay, then we use cyclic load to get delta, logarithm decay rate. Then we can use this equation to get the damping ratio of the soil. Now we know how to get damping ratio in the uh, in the uh, dynamic test in battery.